Hi there, I'm Sarah from Thermotech Australia and this is how to install a power supply. For this tutorial, we have gone with our fully modular GF1 power supply. Just remember, your installation may differ slightly depending on brand and whether it's a fully modular PSU. We have also chosen to show you where your cables need to go without a case and focus more on which port you need to plug what cable into. This is because every case and motherboard layout can be quite different. We will, however, give you some quick cable management tips at the end for when it comes to installing your power supply in your case. Your first step is removing all the cables from the wrapping and laying everything out. Now we're going to run you through each cable, what it looks like and what it does. This is your 24 pin cable. This is your motherboard connector cable. If you're using an older motherboard, you may only have 20 pins, but this isn't too common anymore. Next is your CPU cable. This will give power to your CPU. These cables tend to look similar to standard PCIe cables, however, they are not interchangeable. You want to triple check that you're plugging in the right cable here, so ensure it has the word CPU on it, like it does here. You can also check this by seeing if the cable can split down the middle into two separate 4-pin headers, as PCIe cables can't do this. You might not have these cables in your power supply, however, if you do, these are Molex cables. These can be used to power accessories such as, in our case today, our fan controllers. You can tell these apart from other cables due to their unique look. These are PCIe cables. These are used to connect your graphics card. As mentioned previously, these look very similar to the CPU cable, so it pays to know which is which. Often, these cables will have the two sections split already, whereas your CPU cable will not. Lastly, these are SATA cables. These are commonly used to power hard drives and SSDs. Now we will go through where each cable goes into the power supply. If you have a semi or non-modular power supply, you can skip all or some of this section. There really isn't any set order to plug these in. One of the best things about fully modular power supplies is you can install everything as you need it versus having a pile of cables you might not even end up using. We have chosen today for clarity to plug everything in from left to right. As you can see, the 24 pin goes on the top left, with most of it fitting along the top row and then a smaller chunk of it splitting off to the bottom. Besides that, we're putting in our CPU cable. The side with the CPU labelling usually goes into the motherboard and the other side into your PSU. Across from that, we've elected to plug in our PCIe cable. Most graphics cards nowadays only use one PCIe cable, but occasionally some use two, so plug in both if you need both. And in the final two slots beside one another, we've popped in our Molex and SATA cables. Now it's time to show you where everything plugs into the motherboard. Beginning again with your 24 pin cable, this is pretty much located in the same place for every motherboard, which is off to the right hand side of your board. Connecting these can be a little finicky, but don't be afraid to apply a bit of pressure if you need to. Your CPU cable will often need to be plugged in somewhere on the top left of your board. The connector itself can also be split if your board only takes 4 pins, such as with an MATX board. For everything ATX and above, like ours, it will need all 8 pins inserted. Now we're going to pop in this graphics card we prepared earlier, because this is where your PCIe cable will need to plug into. The port will be located somewhere along the front. Sadly, our cables looked a little ugly after we plugged it in, and if yours does too, never fear, we'll show you a cool fix for this later. Your SATA cables plug into your hard drives like so, and then get tucked away somewhere in your case. Finally, everyone's favourite connector, Molex. These can be a little tricky to plug in for some, but I seem to have a gift and plugged it in straight away, no problems. <laughs> Just try and line it up as best as you can, because the pins can be a little loose and move around a bit. And now, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to go back to the graphics card. I personally just can't handle ugly cables, so we found ourselves some cable extensions. If you're in the same boat, grab some too. You simply plug the ends of your original ugly cables into them and then plug the cable extensions in instead, giving you a much more polished finish. 
Just ensure you're using the correct extension for your cable as they come in a variety of cable types. So there's your breakdown on where all of your power supply cables need to end up. The rest is up to you. But as we didn't show you this in a case, but you will no doubt be building in one, here are some helpful cable routing tips for your PSU cables. Take the quickest path to your port. Now that you know where everything has to go, this should be easy. For example, as your CPU port is located at the top of your motherboard, utilize the cable routing hole that's really close to it. Don't forget cable ties! If you're building a PC, remember to get a stack of these bad boys also. Sadly, not every case comes with handy Velcro ties or things like that, so having a stack of cable or twist ties on hand can save your life when cable managing. And that's it! If you have any questions or tips for your fellow PC builders, feel free to chuck them in the comments down below. Like the video if you did enjoy it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ding the bell to be notified each and every time we upload. We'll see you in the next one.